that plane that crashed? Yeah. Remember that moment? I remember when Pete came out on the stage yeah. and the whole entire hill stood and gave him a right, standing ovation. Right. And I remember going back that Saturday night backstage when there was nobody back there and seeing Pete and Nandi sitting there with their arms around each other. You have forgotten that. Did Boy, you? I'll never forget uh, that night Which when we were all so grateful to see him and, and everyone was hugging him and whatever. And so after uh, I was stage manager and after we closed down at two some in the morning or whatever it was, uh, Jeff White, Allison Brown, me and Pete, Peter got into a jam session and we were so happy that he was alive and that we were alive that we played all night and we watched the sun come up and then we all went to our various jobs uh, here, our jobs here. And we were so punch drunk by morning that we were playing She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain and Skip to Malou. I remember the C medley was Skip to Malou and She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain and some other ungodly inane stuff and we didn't care whether anybody thought we were hardcore bluegrass or what. We were just happy to be alive with Peter there. So, there you have that. Hey John, how long have you been managing the main stage? I don't know if this is my 19th or 20th year as stage manager. Um, but I remember the, the first time that I came to this hill was the first festival in 1976. And my name is John Rossbach, and there, it's, it's uncannily sounds like Rothfoss to some people. And I came in and I met at what uh, is now Johanna's and used to be the A-Lander and had a different name in 76. I met the Lilly Brothers there and came in with them because Billy Pack and I had been playing music together and he was playing banjo with them. And uh, when they asked my name at the gate and I said my name is John Rossbach, they acted like I was God. They just let me through <laughs> and didn't take any money from me and I was mystified. <laughs> Uh, and I come to find, and they acted like I owned the place. They thought I did. <laughs> and then, but, but my best memory of that year, or at least my most intense memory, was when the storm came, and they shut down the main power, and the rain was de just deluging on that same stage up there. And there was a throng of uh, sort of, let's say, well-altered uh, shall we call them hippies, throbbing in the mud, doing free, sort of freestyle quivering protoplasm for dancing. Uh, a fiddler from Maine who I've been playing music with, Simon St. Pierre, was standing on the front of the stage with this 11-year-old toe-headed boy with a beetle haircut playing fiddles, and they were playing twin fiddles on Devil's Dream, while the Lilly Brothers and I were standing on stage watching at the, with the power down. And a guy with long hair like this and hair on his chest and his, his shirt unbuttoned down to here so that you could see the hair on his chest and a chain with a cross was boogieing in the mud out front and the lightning came and hit him directly and burned a permanent mark into his neck and on the cross. He was knocked flat and, and later taken out on a stretcher. And the lightning arced up onto the stage, and Everett Lilly was like here, Billy Pack was here, and I was here. And I, so, Billy's banjo was slightly towards, his back was slightly towards me, but Everett was right there. And to quote Everett, I, I wrote an article on Billy Pack in Bluegrass Unlimited last August, and I quoted Everett's story uh, about that, and he says, he says, I seen that lightning jump off Billy's mic. And he said, I seen that. Ring of fire go around Billy's banjo there. And, and, and there was a ring of fire that arced around Billy's banjo. Wow. Shocked him. I felt like, like sort of a, a wave come up through my arm. And uh, that was a pretty exciting time. <laughs> Well, it's exciting, but it's important to, to say that Buddy Merriman was the person that was struck by lightning, and he's just fine and playing great bluegrass music right now. So he's, he's doing all right. I think, I think that's important. Well, the other identity, I didn't know for 10 years that that was Buddy Merriam, that was that guy. I, I got to know Buddy Merriam on my own. But the interesting thing was that the young fellow, the tow-haired 11-year-old with the uh, beetle haircut, he was playing twin fiddles note for note with... Uh, uh, Simon St. Pierre, that fiddle player was Stuart Duncan. Oh, yeah. I got a question for you. What kind of music did Buddy Marion play before he got with Star <laughs> From the looks of him, he was playing Aerosmith. 